barrel. Hey. Bottom of the barrel, cause hey. the barrel is only hey. small. All right, welcome to Bottom of the Barrel, everybody. We got a special one right now. Chris, are you excited? Yeah, I'm very excited. We're at Magi <laughs> Fest. We said we'd bring you guys some uh, dope magic podcast content from the oldest magic convention in America, and uh, we're gonna be talking to one of the oldest magicians. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring on Lance Burton in a second. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, get hyped. off this. Get off the podcast if you don't know who he is. I'm so hyped. We're yeah. gonna ask him uh, uh. ask him how much money he made. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. That's all we're concerned about. Yeah. You Any know, of the showgirls. Showgirl, maybe some old actress or something. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's what we want. We're going to get the scoop for you. Probably not. I'm going to chicken out most of these questions. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite <laughs> magic trick? <laughs> uh, let's get drinking before you You're so close. Our legs are going to be touching. Let's I'm get to the bottom of it. Let's, let's get, get to the bottom, bottom of it, buddy. Of, uh, of hey, Lance. like, subscribe. Stick around for the Patreon. Do a Patreon with one of these guys? Think he'll let us shave his balls for a Manscaped ad? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, maybe he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> <He'll> <laughs> he hasn't said no to anything yeah. we've asked so far. Well, he just keeps saying he'll be there soon, but he hasn't come yet. So <laughs> uh, at least we can say whatever we want. He'll yeah. never watch this podcast. Yeah, so find a dollar want. for every time. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be great. All right, so we're gonna get ready. We got a bit of a peanut gallery back here. We got Eric, Eric, and Alex, and uh, we're gonna bring in Lance here in a second. So Eric counts. All right. Yeah, this is our it's our podcast. It's called Bottom of the Barrel, hosted by myself, uh, Chris Ramsey, and Wes Barker. Uh, we're both magicians in comedy scene, and uh, yeah, we like to bullshit. We like to talk, and we like to have fun. So we get guests every now and then, but this is an absolute honor to have you on here. And I want to thank you for taking the time because you're getting pulled around. Just you signed autographs for four hours, and now he's uh, we know we sprung this on him. So <laughs> yeah, take your time. Just emptying all the gimmicks. <laughs> Resetting? Are you resetting? Yeah, I'm resetting. I'm going to do a few minutes. This is Lance Burton. Guys, all right. Hey. We got some hard-hitting questions okay. for you, Lance. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Yeah. You might not be ready for them. But first of all, I want to say we, we watched your uh, your interview last night, and you're so interesting to listen to, dude. You can tell oh, a story. Thank you. Uh, that was fun last night, so we didn't rehearse anything. We just said, you know, we're going to ask you questions, and you talk and tell stories. I went, okay, great. And yeah. then we took questions from the audience. And uh, we got off stage, and I was like, how long did we do? We did an hour just <laughs> an hour. making stuff up. Yeah, but you, I mean, you got the gift of gab. You're, uh, you're a compelling person. We love listening to you. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is that this guy, we mentioned last night, this is a, this is a big fan here. That's, oh. why, that's why Chris had to sit in between us. Uh, yeah, yeah, you didn't get too close. <laughs> I'm your security detail, <laughs> okay, actually. Good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you used to do a used to do an act a dove act. No, it wasn't. It wasn't dove. It was car manipulation. Yeah, but nice. uh, you were the first. Uh, Can we show? Him? No, fuck no. <laughs> uh, it was. It's, a, it's fucking bad. It's dude. bad, dude. <laughs> no, it was the you were the first first magician I ever saw. I was in Vegas and I was like twenty one and I went to Monte Carlo and I was like, oh, this is what a magic show could be like. And then uh, and then if you watch my stuff now, you will be appalled that I said that you're one of my major influences. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you'd be like this looks nothing like what i do uh, everybody yeah. has to have a starting point <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure it literally like half his act is just like dick jokes you're yeah. like wait lance burton we're like what the hell i started this doing lance where, burton where, I went, where'd you learn went, these this is way too hard and then i went another direction yeah. so uh yeah hey everybody starts doing something when i was a kid i saw the pictures of channing pollock you know in the books oh, we yeah. didn't have video back then of course we didn't he's have a sexy VCR. man oh channing <laughs> he was really like, is even even up in his 70s yeah. Mm. Even in his 70s. He's a good looking guy. He would walk into a restaurant. All the women would stop and turn and just look. Just swoon. He was just, he was, he just had that it factor. Yeah, he did. You ever feel that, that way? It ever happened to you? You walk in a room, ladies turn in their heads. No, they run, they run out the <laughs> They turn, right. they turn the other way when I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why is he staring at me? Heck yeah. But the uh, Monte Carlo, that was a big gig. Yeah, we opened at the Monte Carlo July 21st, 1996. And, you made uh, a lot of money there, huh? The what? You made a lot of money there. Yeah, that, that was that. That was the uh, a good gig. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, some would say it was. It was a big room. Yeah. And it was. It was. Yeah. It was a big. It, it was a big moment in my career. Um, it was the longest contract any entertainer ever signed in the history of show business. Oh. I was told. Holy Get out of here! It was a thirteen-year contract. Signed at the very beginning, which I was told was no one ever signed a contract that long. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they wow. named the theater, and I, that uh, they named the theater Lance Burton Theater. 
which was which was all my manager's idea, Peter Ravine. Right. And I was like, Peter, stop asking for this stuff. You're gonna <laughs> blow this deal. Yeah. <laughs> he did right by you though. He did right by yeah, you. Yeah, Peter was a good was a good he was a visionary. He was the guy that, you know Yeah. Yeah. We, Business we guy. need to go to the moon and, right. and and land a man on the moon and bring him safely back there. That was Peter. Yeah. I was the nuts and bolts guy. I had you, to figure out how yeah. to land on the moon. Exactly. You're yeah. worried about other things, but I he had your back. I was putting a show together. Yeah. He didn't he didn't yeah. do you like uh, Buddy did to Elvis there in that movie. We saw no, it. no. That was No, Peter was a good guy and was my good friend for many years before he ever became my manager. Thirteen did, years. Did I mean, it end at thirteen or did you get re I actually it a did an bit. extra year. I actually did fourteen. Yeah years and uh before i retire that's an incredible thing to sign for ahead of time yeah that's a because because sure. most people are like yeah i don't even know what i'm doing in a year from now sure to be committed for 13 years yeah. is a, like was that did that scare you yeah, at the time i was in my mid-30s when i signed that contract i was yeah. 50 when i retired yes yeah, so you're like i've you know i mean yeah. you're like that's part of a big chunk of my life and i'm in my 30s and i'm like i've peaked already if somebody wants me to like sign a 13-year contract i gotta warn them i'm yeah. like this is yeah. it's not gonna end well like you know wow that's incredible and that was a, that was a big check that was a nice check yeah that was a gr- it was a great opportunity and and uh what uh c- can i ask you something what do yeah. you what does someone like you do like okay you get all this money you get all this fame all this you know these accolades and whatever like you've got a team behind you that like that helps you out because you know you see a lot of stories man that uh you know things things go a little a little uh, haywire with people who yeah. get into show business like yeah. that to me it was never about the money or fame or anything like that to me it was here's a theater here's a blank canvas yeah mm. and take your paints and do whatever you want and that's wonderful i had total free creative control over the show and everything so so that was that was what it was to me. That was yeah. the important thing is that I had here's here's the blank canvas, mm. here's your paints, go play. Yeah. Create what you want. And and I was always, you know, working on new things because, you know, back then doing the T V specials you had to come up with forty five minutes of material every year. And then burn it. How many did you yeah. do that? Yeah. How, many, how many of those did you we do? We did we did like four <laughs> Lance Burton T V specials for NBC and then I shot uh, a young magician special. And then I also shot a special that I was not in, uh, that I produced, was Fielding West, Hocus Pocus, it's Fielding West, comedy oh. magic. Oh. And also during that era, also I hosted specials for Discovery Channel and History Channel and uh, uh, Animal Planet and, and wow. cable, cable networks. So much fun. Yeah, so it was always, it was always something. something so always new. something coming up. It was fun. I loved working on new things, and I loved doing new one-off projects what's uh what's like the dumbest thing you've ever bought that i ever bought yeah like oh. you spent your money on you're like why the f- did well, i buy that like, like what's every the magician i got a drawer full of magic tricks. yeah we've all got those but you know what i what I, I i developed a rule for going to magicians conventions and i always pass this on to the young magicians and jeff mcbride calls this lance burton's hundred thousand dollar rule this will save you a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> nice all right in your career over your lifetime okay my rule is i never bought a trick i will never buy a trick unless i already know how it's done oh uh, interesting yeah well yeah actually that's great it's done, <laughs> yeah. you're you're probably buying it just to learn the secret. yeah that's, that's great sure. advice and you don't know if you're going to be able to use it yeah where you're working so that'll save you over your lifetime yeah definitely Jeff mcbride says that'll save you yeah dollars. yeah <laughs> good thing you didn't say it on stage last night to yeah. all the magicians yeah. 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 A lot of angry dealers all looking that's at all their cool. stuff they just bought yeah sad. exactly yeah. yeah that's just for the young magician the dealer's gonna put a hit on this guy yeah. okay we gotta <laughs> stop him from saying this yeah. Hey, Lance, when you're doing all the shows in Vegas, were you married at that time? Or were you just like out there pu- pulling showgirls and whatever uh, famous good guys do in Vegas uh, for 13 years? You know, years? The, 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 the main thing is I was <laughs> I had very little free time. Oh, that's fair. Working. Yeah, So I, many women. When I started. There's no time for anything else. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you can do that, but you can't work on new material. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's fair. Uh, you know, when I started in Las Vegas, it was it was two shows a night, seven days a week. I did the first two years without a day off. That's all the get days out of town. And you did you don't know if it's Monday or Sunday or Holy. Thursday because every day's the same. And then and then finally it was Siegfried and Roy that got the first day off. They went to the first six day work week, and they they told the casino, "Well, 
The animals can't work seven days a week. Uh, <laughs> we would love to, but the animals <laughs> so have smart. to have a day off. Is that what is that what you brought in the ducks? You're like, oh, the animals. <laughs> yes, the animals. <laughs> no, but when I uh, so when I was at the hacienda uh, hotel doing my own show, it was uh, at that point it was six days a week, and we had off I think on uh, Monday, and then and then for the first two years, and then I negotiated. Only one show on Sunday. So we'd do the two shows Saturday, then one show on Sunday, oh. and I'd have the rest of Sunday. How <laughs> nice. And Jeez. then one day, accidentally, I got two days off in a row. It was Super Bowl Sunday or something. Oh, right, lined they, up. They wanted the room to show the soup, whatever it was. I can't remember exactly, but I accidentally got two days off. Did oh. you just collapse to the ground? I was like, <laughs> like I came fold back up. to work on Tuesday. I was like, Oh, I feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a real boy. You, know? you have to understand, like, everybody out there who's doing, like, social media stuff, they get burnouts from, like, posting TikToks, like, three times a day. And they're like, oh, my God, I need a vacation. <laughs> and, like, this guy's here, did two shows a day for two years without a break, gets two days off, and is like, I'm recharged, I'm good to go. That's wild. Yeah, those were nine, you know, those are 90-minute shows. Jeez. Those, so, so. What was it? What, After it was that, it so when back I went to, back to shows? The Monte Carlo, that's mm. what I was going to say. I negotiated a five-day work week. Yeah, so I was the first. That's key. I was the first entertainer in Las Vegas to have a five-day work week. So why why is that? Is they they're just like cracking the whip at entertainers they back make then? Money. Yeah. They're just like yeah. pumping. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. They want to make if if the show if if you have a popular show in a casino that's bringing in, you know, a thousand, two thousand, yeah. three thousand people a night. The drop in the casino is huge. After the right. show, people go out and they spend gamble. their money. And, and when the show's off, the casino may may be down fifty thousand dollars a night. Holy crap! But just from from the traffic, from the foot traffic, from the show. Right. So of course, the casino's like, we got to keep these people. You got to keep here, it going. The door. That's who who did you have in your like? You must have some crazy people in your audience, mm. right? Like who? Oh, who yeah. yeah were you through? ever like starstruck yeah, when you like we look were. across? You go, holy shit! What the oh fuck? yeah, we had all kinds of uh, amazing nights. Uh, when we first opened at the at the Monte Carlo one night, Bruce Willis came in. Oh, oh. nice! And that was right after like Die Hard and stuff. It was yeah. He had just uh, the the, the sci fi movie was just about ready to come. Oh out, yeah, Fifth Element or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. Fifth Element, and he brought his three daughters in and they were small children i mean they were you know seven eight years old yeah. so um so i sent my assistant out to i heard he was in you know i sent my assistant out to say you know would you like to come back after the show and say hi and they were like yeah and also ask him if it's okay to introduce him during the show because some mm. celebrities don't mind and some Won't don't want to be and i always right. respect that so he's like yeah, yeah that's fine so so I introduced him during the show. I had him stand up and take a bow, and it was so cute because he stands up and waves to the crowd, and his daughter's like, Daddy, where are you going? Daddy, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. They, they won't get oh. it. And they came back stage, and it was so sweet to see, the, you know, we think of him as, you know, Mr. Action Adventure. Sure. Kippy yeah. yacht, yippee ki <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, but he was he was like in total dad mode. You're right. And he's like, no, no dear, don't touch that now. Super Mr. Burton has to do another show, you know. Aww. And it was so he was so sweet. And he, we took a photo after the show. I still have that photo hanging up in my home. And uh, uh, so so that because I was a big Bruce Willis fan, that oh, was yeah. a, he was the biggest was action great. hero. Yeah. yeah. Carl Reiner came to the show. Wow. When That's he wild. was when he was shooting Ocean's Eleven. Yep. Yeah. Didn't tell anybody he was coming in. Didn't ask for a comp. He walked up to the box office, bought a bought ticket, a came in. My manager, Peter Ravine, found him in the lobby after the show <laughs> and says, Carl Reiner? He says, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to come back and say, meet Lance? Yeah, Carl Reiner. So I come back into the, to the green room uh, after the show, and I have with me uh, a, a, a local radio guy who's supposed to interview me after the show for his radio show. And we walk in, and there's Carl Reiner. So now he gets to interview me and Carl Reiner. Oh. This guy was Money. in hog heaven. Oh, hell yeah. And Carl Reiner is telling us, oh, yeah, I saw Houdini when I was a kid. Yeah. And, and and this show is so much better than Houdini. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Say it again. I'm, I'm sitting here, and the yeah. guy's recording Print Carl it. Reiner's. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, all kinds of uh, amazing things like that over the years. My buddy just flashed up a sign that said Queen. I don't know if he means the old lady or if he means the Oh, the Queen group. of England. The Queen yes. of England. <laughs> Yes, this was back in the 80s, probably 1988, 89. I was at the 
Follies Brugere at the Tropicana Hotel, and they, they booked me to appear at the Royal Variety Performance, oh, cool. which is over in London uh, at uh, the Palladium. And this is a show that had been going on for about 100 years. It's a fundraiser that they do, and, and every year they have one of the members of the royal family you know, there in the, in the box, and it's a big fundraiser. So I, I went over to do that, and that year it was, it was uh, me, Tina Turner, Janet Jackson, Jerry Lewis, a bunch of English entertainers that – yeah. Uh, that, that just a bunch of has-beens, really, if you <laughs> yeah. think about it, eh? But that was, a, that was an amazing, amazing Crazy night to, lineup. to perform, you know, the Queen, wow. and, and we, we met the Queen Elizabeth, you know, after the show. She a fan they, of magic? They, I, she was very sweet, very nice. She came by, and she didn't stop to talk to everyone. You know, they right. were following her with the TV camera. It's all part of a television show. I see, I see. But she came by. Elaine Boozler was standing next to me, and... And she came by, and she stopped, and she leaned in, and she, and, uh, she said, very interesting performance. <laughs> oh, Thank you, okay. Your I'll take it. She didn't and, say uh, better yeah. than Houdini? She didn't say <laughs> that? Uh, she didn't say anything about Houdini. I don't know if she saw Houdini or not. <laughs> I heard Charles is, uh, is a big fan of magic. I've heard I've heard. He's a member from, of the Magic is Circle. He, he's a, mem- yes. he's a member, right? Yes. About 40 years ago, there's a photo of him performing the Cups and Balls oh, at the Magic wow. Circle for his audition. That's cool. Wow. Um, Damn. I, so, he got so I bet he got in after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they let him in. Of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They weren't too worried. <laughs> they didn't make him re-audition. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he was pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, he was great. <laughs> Apparently, the best they've ever had. Yes, uh, he, he practiced. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. I didn't even see it. Oh, that's hilarious, uh, man. That's awesome. All so right. that, that was that. You know, she just passed away recently. So yeah. I, I, I was thinking about the other day. I think that was about halfway through her reign. Whoa. That was in the eighties. Wow. So. Yeah. Dang. That is kind of crazy. She's seen so much. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. She's seen so many performers, though. If you think about it, like oh, yeah. in her lifetime, yeah. no one has seen as many A-list like performers as like the Queen. Sure. That's probably she probably has some stories as well. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. yeah we, couldn't, we couldn't have her on, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where is it? Like, where, people get to go perform at the White House, but the Queen's got to be above the White House. Right? I think so. Think? Have you ever been to the White House? Yes. Uh, I performed on a television show called. Uh, Clorox or Kraft salutes the Ford Theater. Anyway, it's a it's a show at the Ford Theater in Washington D.C. Oh yeah, I think they still That's do a it. Very they famous used, theater for, they used to, for it's the for it's the theater where Abraham Lincoln That's right. was assassinated. That's right. And and it, again, bullet it's a fundraiser, and, <laughs> and it's a, a television show. And this was back in the '80s. And Ronald Reagan and the First Lady are in the front row, along with Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the House. Whoa. And and I did the uh, I did the sword fight number, which. <sighs> Which I did the card sword, yeah, and uh, and then the sword fight with the mask guy, and so I asked him. I said, "Oh, do you think I could use the president to uh, pick the card?" And uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna we're say not, we're not gonna let you near the president with a sword. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, wrong, so wrong. Said, wait, wait to read the room here, too, uh, Lance. Here, I mean, the here's here's in Richard. The theater. Here's Richard Chamberlain, the host. <laughs> use him. If you yeah. kill him, we don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So 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 now they have a reception for us. Next, we're going to do a car truck of the grassy knoll uh, with <laughs> yes, the president. Exactly. <laughs> they, they have a reception for us at the White House. You know that afternoon. Then we come back, and now I'm in the dressing room, and I come down. I'm ready to go on. I come down. And I'm walking down the stairs. I have the sword in my hand. As soon as my foot touched the ground level, the instant my foot touched the ground level off the stairs, a Secret Service agent stepped up to me out of nowhere. Oh. I have no idea where he it's came a ninja. from, <laughs> and he. He comes right up to him and he says, Mr. Burton, is this the sword you're using in your act? And I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so wow. Holy crap. And, and so, so, you know, they just wanted to let me know, I that, think, that, that they're they watching there. me. Exactly. Yes. And so I'm, I'm on stage and I look. There's the orchestra pit. There is a Secret Service agent in the orchestra pit between me and the president with a submachine gun. Wow. Yeah, just, Holy I, sh- how are I, you during that? I always, <laughs> I always imagine it's that was just for me. I was the only one with a with an actual with an, weapon. With a weapon. Yes. Could you imagine wow. how insane that assassination attempt would have been? We're like hiring Lance Burton, and then somehow Lance is like some some mole spy who's had to kill the president. Like yeah. that would have been with insane. With a dull sword. Well, yeah. Well, remember Abraham? With a card sword. <laughs> Remember, Abraham Lincoln was shot by an actor. That's, that's true. true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, oh my, God, that's my goodness, dude. What a great story. 
Oh man, Did, didn't you do a movie? Did you ever do any movies? I think you did a movie a while ago. Didn't yes, you? I, I I wrote and directed a movie called Billy Toppet, Master Magician. Yes, it's available on Amazon. Yeah, it came out uh, it was a couple years ago, was it? Yeah, I it think we or we had the world premiere in 2015. Right. And we did our festival premiere in 2016. I released it on Amazon in 2017. Uh, so it was written by uh, Michael Goudeau and, and myself. And Michael Goudeau was my special guest star in, in my show for 20 years. Um, but it's a comedy and it's, it's a family film. So it's something we, we created that you can watch with your kids. Nice. So it's, it's for kids and adults to watch together. Nice. So a lot of it's very headache. silly okay. and, and funny, but yeah. you know, there's jokes in there that the kids don't get that yeah. the, the adults That's key. Get. Yeah. Yeah, much like magic shows. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. That'd and, be something for everyone, like you were and, saying uh, yesterday. It, like a Shrek movie. It was a yeah, exactly. It, yeah. And it was a it was it was a project that uh, had been simmering in my mind for a long, long time. Back back when I was a kid there was a TV series called The Magician with Bill Bixby. Mm. Played a magician who solved mysteries. And Mark Wilson was the magic consultant on that oh, show wow. and appeared in many of the episodes. So that was like 1974. Then then 10 years later, as it, 11 years later, 1985, I did an episode of Knight Rider mm. where I played a, Hasselhoff. a magician who was trying to kill David Hasselhoff. Nice. With a sword? I was a magician. <laughs> well, I did. I probably had a sword in that. <laughs> uh, but I was a magician slash assassin. <laughs> See, that's why they were sketchy when you were in yeah, the fourth exactly, theater. They were like, yeah. we've seen that episode. We know exactly. how this ends. And, and, uh, and Mark Wilson was on the set. He provided the illusion. So Mark was the one that encouraged me. He said, you should, you should keep notes and try to wow. create something. Because he, he said, Lance, you're doing a good job, and, and you, should, you should try to do more of this. So I kept a notebook with, with ideas, and, and then, you know, 20 years later. It just for out. that? Just for, like, the yeah. one-day eventuality that you're yeah. going to work on a movie and, and have all these ideas written down? Yeah. Do you do that a lot? Do you take a lot of notes even now? Yeah, sure, yeah? sure. I, I go. Jokes and stuff. And yeah, it's important to have a notebook if you're a magician because you, yeah. you have an idea for something. Maybe it's impractical at this sure. point in your life. Yeah. Maybe it's too expensive. But write it down. But, you know, 20 years later, you may be in a position where you can go back and look and go, oh, yeah, that was a good idea. Now I got a big stage. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'll try it. Definitely. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's always in. Don't let your ideas go. Don't let them go to waste. Yeah. Don't and and definitely write them down. down, even no matter how stupid you think yeah. they are. Just, just write it down. Write it down. Because you will forget them. You will. Yeah. Eric's got a, a quick question. Sure. You, want, you want to grab a mic? I never got this question, Lance. Um, you know, you've always had the reputation for being, you know, charming and squeaky clean, Mr. Every, everybody loves you. Have you ever had a complaint or somebody, something go wrong or, mis, in, you know, somebody misinterpreted something in career and you got, like, none trouble? Oh, but. yeah, sure. The, you, you, here's, here's, the, here's the main thing. When you're doing a show in Las Vegas, you, have, you always have to decide, is this a legitimate complaint or is this just a noise complaint? Yeah, right. You know? Because in my show, I would do jokes. I would do like clout chasers. Beer. They call them nowadays. I, I don't know what. The, I would do jokes on beer, on right. alcohol, sure. on yeah. drinking. I'm working basically in a nightclub. Yeah, of so course. I, do, I have drinking jokes in of the course. show. Well, you get letters. Uh, you know, it's. I don't think it's right that you make fun about <laughs> drinking because you know somebody in my family was killed by a drunk oh, driver. Yeah. You know, and you go, okay, yeah, <laughs> of course. You yeah. feel terrible that somebody had a, you know, had. A Goes that saying. Yeah, but, but it's comedy. But yeah, it's comedy. It's yeah. a show. Yeah, it's not a documentary. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, so it's always something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and so like you said, like what happens in the room, yeah, is a lot different than what you read about or what you hear yeah. about. And we're big fans of comedy. We watch a lot of comedy shows, and we understand that that if you're not there, like you shouldn't be writing about it to yeah. other people. You shouldn't be telling anything. Yeah, you're not telling anybody else. There's nuances. Exactly. And no one got killed by a flying car, so you're good on that trip. Yeah, that was so okay. far. Yeah. Like, so that far. one's a safe one. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, nobody that you know yeah. of. <laughs> but I tell you, you know, co in comedy, it's it's sometimes you just. I always like to go out there during my show in the 90 minutes. I had portions of the show where I could play, where I would could improvise. I yeah. love going out and just talking to people because every you would, sometimes you strike gold. Yeah. The the guy who was the best at that was my good buddy Louis Anderson, who who oh. by the way. Was on fans. that show with President Reagan. Oh wow! That's nice. where I met Louis. Oh hell I, yeah! I met Louis Anderson in the on the He's steps going into the White House. Oh wow! Wow. Louis, I had appeared on the Tonight Show, got my started in 1981, and about two years later, Louis 
did the same thing. He had wow. his first Tonight Show. And he just skyrocketed, yes. too. And Louie Louis and I met on that show in, like, 80, 85, 86. And, and we've been friends for all these years. And he was just the sweetest man and the funniest man. But in his show in Las Vegas, it was really interesting. He would come out, and he would do about 10 or 12 minutes at the beginning of his act of material. You know, sure. about Las Vegas, gambling yeah. jokes. And then he would start over on stage right. He would talk to somebody on the front row. And then he would move to somebody a little closer to center. And so he would like have like four people. He would just go across. Just crowd work? Just crowd That's work. That's amazing. Just wow. talking to people. Where are you from? What do you do for a living? Is, who are you here with? And he was and just, just improvising just, yeah. for for like 45 minutes. Get out of town. And then wow. he would close with like another 10 minutes of material. Of solid material. And it, was, it was brilliant. I mean, I can't imagine. That's and then we go backstage insane. after the show, <laughs> and we're in the dressing room, and he continues yeah, straight in killing. the dressing room. It's, I'm in Louis, these are some of the people from my show. And he's like, oh, where are you from? Yeah, you he's, he's, <laughs> Start over. He's, he's like, Louis is just, and he didn't You just do can't it. turn it off. He wasn't on. He, that's you, just that the way. Just him? That was just him. That wow. was how Louis every day operated. It, he was just hilarious. In like 2012, I cold called Louis. Yeah. And he let me open for him at the plaza. Wow. Nice. No way. Yeah. I didn't know this. Nice. First time I ever performed in Vegas. And he was like, I'm like, can I just come do 10 minutes? He's like, you can do 25. I don't care. <laughs> no <laughs> way. So, <laughs> what a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. I do 25 minutes. And I'm like, this is insane. And then he does like whatever. So long. So much crowd work. Yeah. I come backstage. I'm like, yeah, man, that was really crazy. Thanks. And, and he's like, cool. I'm like, my mom's here. She's a fan. He's like, cool. Bring her back. When bring my mom back. He did three Cindy. hours of that, just yeah. ripping. Cindy. Oh yeah, like yeah. just a show for my mom for three no hours. No way, it was wild. Wow, man. what a sweetheart. Well, Louis's mom, o Aura Anderson. I met her. He brought her to the White House that day. That was oh, his wow. day. What he a brought his That's mom. Amazing. That's so I sweet. met Louis's mom, and if you ever saw the series, that last series he was on, Baskets. Uh, Baskets. Louis won an uh, an Emmy Award mm. for playing Christine Baskets. He based that character on his mom. Oh wow! So and he knew I that met, character. I met Louis's mom, so he, <laughs> he he Louis was a brilliant actor and a brilliant comic and writer, and I miss him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a big loss. Rest in peace, Louis. He's uh, he's I mean, he came from that era. We were just talking about that actually yesterday. That era of like where you had the Steve Martins, you had uh, the John Candys, the Louis. Oh yeah. It was it was just such a heavy era for comedy, and and these guys were the biggest stars in the world at the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, the comedy boom. You know, Louis came in right in that comedy boom in the 80s yeah. and then c continued in all through, you know, till, till his, his passing. So he was a major force. And yeah. Just such a kind man. Absolutely. Such a, a, a gentle, kind man. Well, Lance, we have to kick you out. Chris and I have things to do, <laughs> well, uh, so we gotta go. <laughs> my, <laughs> no, I know. Nice. I'm aware you gotta leave, so uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying we to could ex actually sit here all day, but we know that you've got yeah. things to do, and you've been so kind, man. You've been literally, Lance. All right, if you guys don't know him, he's goaded. He's been sitting out here for like three and a half hours, meeting absolutely everybody. Uh, just it shows you a fantastic. I mean, it's just such an inspiration for everybody else, and and for you to just stop and talk to people well, blows I'm, their mind I'm, I'm happy to be here back at magi fish the uh, the first time i came here was like 45 years ago uh my mentor harry collins and i came up here uh back had to be in like 1977 i was probably like 17 years old yeah and uh it's a great convention and and josh and andy took it over a few years ago yep. you know they 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 met on my television show I did this. I did the was that what you were presenting that yesterday? Was the, that was yeah, on your show. That oh, was I missed that because because Andy was in England, and I flew him over to do this TV show called Lance Burton's Young Magician Showcase. That's where they met for the first time when they were teenagers, and then you know years later I hear these guys have formed a company and the <laughs> Vanishing Inc. and now they have a convention. Yeah. and they've both been doing great. But that's where they met was on. So their interesting show. that they had you on their show. <laughs> yeah, it's full circle. What's that? Tell the Josh Air Airport. Oh, story. this is great. Can you, can you reset this the camera? Is, <laughs> this real is. Quick? <laughs> Just hit record twice. Uh, Thanks, buddy. That's so amazing. Okay. So, so this this young magician showcase. So this is back like in 1998, and and I decide I'm going to produce this show uh, called Young Magician Showcase, and I'm going to. So anyway, I asked young magicians to send in tapes. Yeah. 
you know, as audition. So I picked like 15 kids. I got like over 100 submissions, and I had to watch every one of them. And, <laughs> and then at the end of the process, we sent out letters. You know, most of them, you know, thank you for submitting, but we can't use you on the show. And then like 15 kids got the letters saying, congratulations, you're on the show, and here's the dates where we're going to shoot. So we send all these letters out. I sign all the letters. We put them in the mail. And it's, uh, I think it was December because we closed down for two weeks just before Christmas. That's my Christmas vacation. So I fly back home to Kentucky to see my family. I get on the plane. I fly to Atlanta, Georgia. And now I got to change planes. I got like a two hour in between planes. So Atlanta, Georgia is a huge airport. <laughs> I get into the tram to go down to the D gates or wherever it was going, the, another concourse. And I'm on this tram, and it goes, and it stops. The doors open. You know, people get on, people get off. Doors close. It goes. It's like a, it's like a subway. Mm. And then it stops. Doors open, and they're getting on the tram is Joshua J. <laughs> 17-year-old Joshua J. And I'm in the car. And I look up, yeah. and Joshua J.'s mouth drops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. I say to him, Joshua, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yes. Do you ha how much time you got between flights? He's like, uh, uh, like, like a couple hours. Okay, come with me. We're going to get lunch. And he's like, oh, he's like well, how did you know? How did so you find wild. me? How did oh, I'm like, Don't worry about it. Listen, <laughs> the reason I wanted to see you is because to let you know you're in the show. Oh, no. Jeez. That, Dude, uh, that's we the mailed the letters out. When you get, by the time you get home, you have the letter. <laughs> but I just wanted to let you know personally you that you're in the everyone. show and the dates. And here's the dates. And he's like, "Uh, what? what? But how did you? How did you? Okay, let's get lunch. What do you want to eat?" And we go, and I, we get some sandwiches. And 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 after about an hour of him like going, "What is going on?" I finally told him, oh, yeah. "Dude, oh, it was just an accident." Oh, I should never have told him. All he's right. notoriously not smart. I should have kept it. What an amazing story. That's fucking awesome, uh, oh. dude. We, I think we, yeah, gotta, we I think everyone. kids want to come in. We're so sorry. Yep. Uh, we want to find a quiet place to have a right. have a chat with him. Thank you so much, <laughs> Thank Lance. Thank you. Thanks, Good guys. Good luck with everything. Lance. It was a pleasure Thanks meeting you. Pleasure chatting. Yes. Thank you. Don't forget to tell three friends, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Peace. Oh, thanks, man. That was fucking great. Down in the barrel, there's a naked man, a stupid.